everyone! Today's video is going to be a baby parrot costume and I will be using the Simplicity 1767. So this is just basically a onesie and I just kind of dressed it up with a few extra pieces and there you go, such an easy parrot costume. It's actually a really quick and easy onesie so it wasn't too hard to put together. All the extra shapes that I've made I will have linked down below so you can print them out for yourself and that way you don't have to make your own. Of course if you want to make them a little smaller or a little bigger you have a template there for you to use as a guide. But it gets really cold here in Germany during October because winter is going to start soon obviously so it does get really freezing in the evenings. So I wanted something that was going to keep my little monster really warm and I even added the mittens because we all know how cold babies hands get and it's so hard to keep them warm with little gloves or anything like that. So it was perfect to add these little fold over mittens onto the costume itself and it was very convenient. So for this costume I am going to be making it out of fleece so it's nice and warm. The lining in the hoodie is going to be a knit and then all of the appliques that I'm making are going to be in just normal felt so nice and easy, nothing too difficult to work with. And if you're following with my template of pieces, then that's how many felt pieces you will need. If you're going to change up the sizes, then you may need more or less. And then you just have a few notions that you're going to need for this. For this pattern, I am doing view A and I'm going to be making a size medium for 12 months. And then we just have six pieces that we're going to need for this. And remember, I'm adding the mittens. So go ahead and cut out all your pieces and then we can get started. So first we're going to grab our front, our back and our sleeve pieces and we're going to add a 5 8 inch stay stitch seam allowance across the top necklines. And this will help everything from stretching out. Then we're going to grab our two front pieces laying them right sides together. On that center front at the bottom under that notch, we're going to pin it together and we're going to sew this at a 5 8 inch seam allowance making sure to back stitch at the top there in the middle. Then we're going to go through and pin up the rest of this seam and sew it with a base stitch at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Open up the seam and iron it. Then we're going to take our zipper and we want the notch to face down so you're going to have right sides together and we want the pull tab to lay one inch down from the top edge. Then we're going to line up the rest of the zipper so that the teeth are lined up right in the middle of the seam. Go ahead and pin down both sides. We're going to sew down one side across the bottom under the silver notch and up the other end. So you're going to use your zipper foot and you're just going to sew down. When you get to that bottom end, just leave your needle down, raise your presser foot, rotate your fabric. Then you can lower the presser foot and start in the new direction. And I'm just going to go over this one twice just to make sure it's secure at the bottom. And then you're going to do the same thing switching to the new direction to go back up the other way. So this is what you should have on the outside. Grab your seam ripper and we're going to open up that base stitch seam all the way down to the bottom of the zipper. So you should see that your teeth should be right underneath this little opening. Open up the zipper at the top and then we can go back and sew down those top ends since we weren't able to get it with the zipper tab there the first time. Going back to that bottom end of the seam allowance where the curve is, we're just going to clip out some of the fabric right before 
the seam. Don't come past your thread. That way this lays a little neater. Grab your back two pieces, laying them right sides together. Same thing, we're gonna pin up that back seam, but this time we're gonna do the whole side. Sew this together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Same thing, we wanna put some clips in the curved area. So I'm gonna put about three. And then once again, open up your seam and iron it down. Going to the bottom feet, we're gonna make our pleat. So we have our two dots, we wanna match them together, folding right sides together first. Make sure your dots line up. And then on that top dot, you're gonna fold it back over to open the foot up again. So you have this little zigzag fold. Pin it down and you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Sew these edges down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, so they stay in place. So this is what they should look like. The sleeve and the mitten were a bit too small as they were. So I had to alter this pattern and extend the sleeve and the mitten a little bit so that it worked a lot better and it actually fit her arm because they were actually very short as they were. So for the mitten, I did add one inch on each end. Grab our sleeves and same thing on the sleeves, I added one and one fourth inches to the bottom edge. We're gonna fold these in half, right sides together, lengthwise. And we're gonna stitch the straight edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam allowance, and then open these right side out, making sure the corners poke out nicely. Press these in place, and then on the open edges, we're gonna do a 5 8 inch seam allowance base stitch. The side with the center dot is where you're gonna place your mitten, and you want the base stitched edge to go along the outer edges. Do the same thing to the other sleeve, making sure they are opposite. We're gonna sew that center folded seam down at a 1 8 inch seam allowance, and then we're gonna re-sew over the base stitches that we made the first time. Fold up the bottom edge of the sleeve one inch and pin this in place. When I do this fold over, it's very thick, which is why I extended it a little more on each piece. So that way the fold over was easier and I still had a good amount of space for my elastic channel. We're gonna sew these down at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. <laughs> Grab your elastic guide and we're gonna cut our 1 4 inch wide elastic to the length of your guide, depending on the size you're using. And we want two pieces. Grab a safety pin, putting one through each end of the elastic. This is gonna help guide our elastic through the channel on the sleeve. So you wanna go through the side with the mitten first if you're adding the mitten, just because it makes it a little bit easier to get it through the first part than the second. And I'm just using a chopstick, you can use a pencil, and I'm just kinda of poking at the safety pin to kinda of help push it through. When the end gets close to the opening, make sure to pin it down so it doesn't get lost inside. And now that it's threaded through, we're gonna sew these ends down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, doing a back stitch a couple times just to make sure it's secure. You wanna make sure there's about a half an inch of elastic hanging out from the end on each side. Go 
going to our back piece. You're going to match the notch on the back armhole with the notch on the sleeve armhole. Line these up and pin them together, right sides together. Open up that sleeve and then you can add the other one to the other side with right sides together. Then you can open that up and then we'll add the front making sure those are right sides together, pinning the sleeves in the same manner. Then we're gonna sew these seams at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open all of the seams. Fold over what you have of a onesie with wrong sides together. We want to line up one side of the sleeve and the side edge. Open the sleeve up so it makes a very large natural angle and we're going to grab a piece of paper and we're going to make our wing template. So the sleeve mark will end right before your channel seam. So I'm just going to draw a line from the sleeve to the armpit area and then I'm going to sew down the side to the waist. I have a protractor that I'm going to use to make this nice curve connecting the two ends and this will be our template. From here we want to add a 5 8 inch seam allowance all around each edge. Go ahead and cut this out with the seam allowance. And then we're going to go to our fleece and we're going to cut out four of these. Sew these curves down at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam allowance. Turn these right side out making sure the sewn edge is folded out neatly and we're going to pin this down. Then we're going to do a 1 8 inch top stitch to hold it in place. Along those open edges we're going to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance base stitch. So we're going to start by lining up one of the raw edges with the side of the onesie and this could be the front or the back and at the corner of what we sewed you want that corner to lie in the middle of the seam allowance between the back onesie piece and the sleeve piece. Then you're going to kind of curve the other edge to match up with the sleeve and pin that down as well. We're going to sew this on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Making sure when you get to that corner that you once again raise your presser foot to do that pivot to the new direction. So this is what you should have. So now we're just going to fold the onesie back over so that it's right sides together. And we want to tuck in the wings and we're going to pin up all of the sides, matching all the seams and edges. Sew all these edges down at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure to backstitch where the sleeves are. Going to the hood pieces, we're going to lay them right sides together. Pin up that curved side and do the same thing to your lining. Sew these at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
iron open the seams. Going to the neckline on the onesie, we want to cut off the seam allowance to just before that stay stitch seam. Then we're going to take the bottom of our hood and line it right sides together with the neckline. We're going to sew these together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to stop at the dots that you've marked on the outside edge, which is the 5 8 inch seam allowance on the sides. Open your hood so that it's right side out, and then you're going to lay your lining piece so that they're right sides together, matching the seams and the corners. Sew the front edge of the hood together at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to the neckline of the hoodie, we're going to fold it over 5 8 inches and iron it down. Fold your lining in to the hoodie, making sure the front edge of the hoodie is nicely turned out. And we're going to pin it where the marks are. And we're going to sew from one of the marks to the other mark. And this is going to create our elastic casing. So we're going to sew this at a one inch seam allowance. Then we're going to grab our 3 4 inch wide elastic and we're going to cut a 7 and a half inch piece. Once again, you're going to add your safety pin so that we can thread this through the channel. Make sure to pin the other end down so it doesn't get lost inside. We're going to sew across the elastic at those marks that you've made and you want to go across a couple times to make sure it's secure and you, once again you want a half inch hangover of elastic at the ends. Going to the sides, we're going to tuck the zipper inside and then you're going to fold over the lining to cover the raw edge. And we're going to pin these down. You're going to match the center seam of the hood to the center of the back piece and the same on the other corner. And then you can evenly line up the folded over edge of the lining to the seam allowance of the hood. And you're going to slip stitch this closed. So at this point your onesie is pretty much complete. And you can see that the mittens, you can fold them over, you have a nice little mitten on the end. So at this point I'm just going to show you how I drafted the pieces in case you want to alter yours for any reason. So I'm leaving the center back open. I'm not placing anything on the center back and I'm also putting these feathers at a slanted angle. So I just kind of measured one out at the size I wanted. Take your feather piece and I'm just going to trace it out onto the felt and you can get about 10 to 11 pieces per felt square. Once I've cut out all of my feathers in all the colors that I need, I'm going to do about two rows of the red, one row of the yellow, one row of the green, and two rows of the blue. And I'm just going to line these out so that they're laying how I like them. And I want to make sure that the feathers don't go over the mittens, that they stay on the actual sleeve or on the wing piece. That way you don't have issues later on trying to fold your mitten over. 
Once I'm happy with the placement of everything, then I will just grab my hot glue gun and I will just start gluing everything down in place, doing little sections at a time. Do the same thing to the other side. And then I also added some on the butt area so that we have little tail feathers. And I have a picture here so you can kind of use that as a guide if you want to add that as well. Next, I'm gonna draft out the eyes. So I'm just kind of lining it out on the hood here on what I think the placement should be. And then I'll do the other two smaller circles. And then I'll go to the center of my hood and that's where I'm gonna draft out my beak. So for the beak, I'm going to add one fourth inch seam allowance to the edge and I'm going to cut out two of those but the eyes you don't have to add anything you can cut out the size that they are so this is what you should have once everything's cut out take your beak piece and lay them right sides together we're gonna sew around the edge at a 1 4th inch seam allowance, leaving about a two inch gap at the top. Now that we have that, I'm gonna cut off that little point at the bottom so we have a nice point when we turn it out. You can use a pencil or chopstick to make sure all the edges are turned out neatly. Fold in that gap edge nicely. and then we'll top stitch at a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna hot glue the eyes together. And then I'll place them onto the hood and hot glue these on as well. To match them, I'm just kind of eyeing it and feeling around, making sure they're kind of lined up the same. And then the beak, I'm just laying it over that edge about an inch and a half to two inches right in the middle of the hood. And that is it. You have an easy parrot costume for your littlest family members. And this is perfect if you have really cold weather and you want a way to keep them warm and a costume that's going to be practical. So this will work out very nicely. It does have enough room that you can definitely put more clothes underneath to help layer up. That way you can make it a little warmer for them if it really is that cold outside. But I love how it came out. She seems very comfortable in it. So I'm excited to take this one out for her first Halloween this year. I hope this helped you with any last minute costume ideas that you may have been looking for. Please subscribe if you have not already. Hit the bell so you get notified when I upload the next couple costume videos. And I will see you guys all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye!